Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Episode of the Lodge Cast. I'm your Lodge Master. With me, as always, is Brother Bishki. Hello, and Brother Lucas. Top of the morning to you. And tonight, I can't get hyped up enough for the guest we have. We are on the west side at the landmark, very fancy, and the guest is just as fancy, if not fancier, a brother Zach. Zach, stoked. <laughs> Welcome to the Prius, sir. You know, it's much like the Prius I'm normally in, but... <laughs> but slightly different. Well, it feels more special. And there's, Hotter. It, it there, feels there's more holier. boys. There's more boys in the Prius than you're probably used to. That's true. It is key to note that uh, Zach was instrumental in getting this podcast started. It was his brainchild that got the ball rolling. He's like... Why don't you guys put a podcast together? And 10 episodes in, that's what we're doing. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, thank you, Zach. Thank you so much, and I hope we are doing you proud with the work that we are doing here. Oh, beyond proud. Words can't describe. Well, that's great. We are here tonight for a titan of the industry. Mr. Paul Schrader has a new movie. It is called First Reformed. Very catchy title. First, before we get into First Reformed, I want to take the temperature, the Schrader temp in the Prius today. Zach, let's start with you. Like, what is your history with Schrader? Like, what's, what are your thoughts, feelings, emotions about the man? So, I'm hopeful. <laughs> let's, start, let's start with hope. Yes. It, you know, advanced buzz, strong. Right. Uh, he's been a bit of a wayward son uh, in recent years. <laughs> the Canyons was not his finest moment. No. Although it made for some uh, delicious reading for cinephiles, uh, how it was made. Um, I'm not, admittedly, there's a few Schrader uh, key movies um, that I am not familiar with. Sure. Obviously, I know Blue Collar. I know the movies he wrote for Scorsese. Um, and I know his later ones, like, he did Affliction, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Autofocus, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Like, I, I admittedly, I have not seen Hardcore. Okay. Mm. I have not That's seen... That's a big one. What was the Criterion release we were talking Mishima, about? Mishima, Life in Four Chapters. So that sounds cool as shit. Haven't seen it. It's great. Um, so, you know, so I'm not like a Schrader completist. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was one of the more colorful characters, if I recall, in the Easy Riders, Raging Bulls Yeah, I, I, I always think of that picture that's in that book of him just with a fucking revolver looking like he yeah. was ready to tussle. <laughs> yeah. And what's the deal with his brother? Didn't he have a brother his that he brother worked with? His brother writes with him on a number of pictures. Still to this day? Uh, oh, no. Uh, I... Len Trader passed, sadly, in October okay. of 2006. Uh -huh. These boys know they're Schrader. Wow. What's your temp, Bishke? Like, uh, you seem like a Schrader boy. Yeah, uh, I like, uh, I mean, Taxi Driver's an all-time great. I think that's given him the cachet for, you know, to do whatever he wants for the rest of his life, and he's done a lot of films. I like <laughs> uh, American Gigolo is, an, oh, is, right. is probably my favorite Schrader. I think mm. as, as a director, he's been a little hit and miss. I, I, I like his writing, but... His directing, uh, I haven't seen a lot of recent Schrader. I did not see Dog Eat Dog from last year, but this one is getting a lot of buzz, so I'm, I was very interested. I watched Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters on Filmstruck last night. and uh, <laughs> Always doing the that, prep work. That was, yeah, I mean, like to do little, I like to do a little research, and so I, uh, and it was, it was, it was very good. It was uh, beautifully made, probably the best looking Schrader film, so I'm, I'm pumped up. I like Ethan Hawke, and I'm. I'm pumped up for some Schrader. Are you a happier camper now that we're including some, at least ostensibly, more nutritious films in our podcast? Diet? Yeah, I mean, t taking the drive to the west side to see Paul Schrader versus Overboard, taking the drive to the west side to see Overboard was a long drive back and forth. But today I was just um, happy. Um, 
Uh, and uh, I, I definitely was going to see this no matter what. So okay, great. So, yeah, Lucas. Yeah, no, I, I uh, echo everything that these gentlemen have already said. I'm a big uh, Paul Schrader fan, you know, because the Taxi Driver is like a flawless script. Study it in college, <laughs> and he adapted uh, Raging Bull and, and made it what it was, and even adapted uh, my favorite movie, The Last Temptation of Christ. So he's worked with Scorsese a lot. That is your favorite movie? It's my number one favorite movie of all time. We can get into later. Wow. But for full disclosure, (laughs) I was actually taught by Paul's younger brother, Leonard Schrader, Mm. at the American Film Institute in screenwriting. And and he was an amazing mentor and teacher and writer and told me a lot of stories. And and everything he read in Raging Easy Riders and Raging Bulls is true. Like, they were just coked out of their mind and waving guns around. And, <laughs> and like, at, like at their father's funeral, because they were Dutch Calvinists. You know, oh, I Len, forgot about that. Len was telling us that his brother was, like, at his, at his height of his cocaine addiction, meaning he always had lots of cocaine on him, on his person, you know, and vials around his neck and his pockets, you know. And he refused to come into the church and sit down, I guess. So Len was trying to coax him... <laughs> out of the men's room or out of the bathroom in the back and they got into a little tussle as as brothers want to do mm-hmm. and and Paul said to his brother you know get the fuck off me god you know like like god like frustrated mm-hmm. and and i guess the priest thought he heard fuck god like he no. thought Paul Schrader was like renouncing his faith like at the funeral so the priest was like misinterpreting the situation and trying to like talk Paul back into Priest has good hearing. Yeah. Um but no, I'm I'm excited to see this movie tonight because yeah, Paul Schrader's had a lot of hit and misses and I feel like he's made more bad films than good ones as a director at least. But this one I think you know, it's synergy, you know, it's lighting in a bottle. It sounds like he might have hit the fastball, so I'm very excited to see what he delivers. And if I might just qu- quickly interject. You might. I was a little nervous being invited to such a classy affair oh. as my first guest appearance yeah, on the Yeah, you Lodge wanted a cast. flogging, didn't you? I, I kind of... I'm a, I'm a little jealous that I'm... This <laughs> you is wanted not, to be on the ship for Overlord? Well, some of my... Is that what you Some saying? of my favorite episodes are, are Father and Morth. Uh, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> Look at this super fan. It's, you know, you guys really go go the extra mile so I don't have to. And I, I, I almost feel like, you know, as payback... For all the gifts I've been given. Sure. Well, this won't be but, your only appearance. Sir. Okay. Yeah. And the next one will be sure to hit you hard and right. hit and hit you where it hurts. I'm with Brother Bishke. I would have this. I absolutely would have gone to this one regardless of of inclusion. But that's so. That's maybe great. there will maybe you know a salad dragon still awaits us even in a in a tasty treat. There, um, salad dragons lurk in. Every corner of every cinematic endeavor. So yeah, you yeah. just got to know what you're looking for. You got to know to say its name and call it out from the mountaintops. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of excitement, reverence, respect in this car. I can't wait to see how that dips or rises even further. Let's go to the Church of Paul Schrader here. Let's let's, bow, get, let's get reformed. Let's bow our heads and get reformed and. Uh, Stare at Ethan Hawke's fucking face for two hours. Can't wait for that. We offer you love. We offer you light. We offer you possible redemption. Mm-hmm. Mm. We'll Seize see- the day, boys. Nope. Seize the day. Nothing is predetermined in this Lodge cast. And we'll see you guys on the other side. Solemnly exited service. We got reformed. The Psalms of First Restorm. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, before we get into it, I think we're, we're all having a lot of feelings right now. We're all grappling internally with things, mm-hmm. demons and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But before we get too into it, Papa Bishki, what, what do you got for a, an official synopsis on this one? From Rotten Tomatoes, Reverend Ernst Toller, Ethan Hawke, is a solitary middle-aged parish pastor at a small Dutch Reformed church in upstate New York on the cusp of celebrating its 250th anniversary. Once a stop on the Underground Railroad, the church is now a tourist attraction, catering to a dwindling congregation 
eclipsed by its nearby parent church, Abundant Life, with its state-of-the-art facilities and 5,000-strong flock. When a pregnant parishioner, Amanda Seafried, asks Reverend Toller to counsel her husband, a radical environmentalist, the clergyman finds himself plunged into his own tormented past and equally despairing future until he finds redemption in an act of grandiose violence. From writer-director Paul Schrader, taxi driver, American Gigolo, Affliction, comes a gripping thriller about the crisis of faith that is at once personal, political, and planetary. Wow. The three, okay. The three P's. The three P's were in effect. P P P. Um and Triple P. I just want to say, I I feel like I've been saying it a lot lately, but I want to say again, might be quietly one of the strangest movies I've seen in the last couple of years. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Not I think we can cover the plot pretty easily. That uh that synopsis was pretty thorough. Mm-hmm. A little too thorough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, there's not a lot that actually happens in the movie. You guys can argue this, but like it's so to to betray any plot would be to give away massive swaths of the film. But it's first off, format wise, square picture. We're dealing with one three three. Yes, mm-hmm. very interesting. Did, did that it's a TV aspect ratio? How did for that those with HD TVs at home? How did that strike you guys? I right in line. It felt it felt right because the opening credits kind of like tee you up for that, and I go, oh, it's one of these old school uh, like like uh, Carl Theodore Dreyer, you know, Diary of a Country Priest. Mm. Like he's taking us back in the way back machine. Yeah. I don't think I don't think the next younger generation of filmmakers will be making anything like this. I think this <laughs> no. is a dying breed yeah. of filmmaker. Oh that's, yeah, that's what I was getting from Frame One. I'm like, this, this is the Gran Torino. Of, this is uh, old school. Uh, yeah, this yeah. this movie <laughs> is gonna get under your skin and twist. Yeah, and take you to surprising places. And I will say. I did not watch a frame of trailer. I did not oh, wow. read a synopsis. You went in fresh as a I, daisy. All I knew was Ethan Hawke played a reverend. Same. And Same. that there were themes of climate change. Didn't know that. Didn't, didn't know that. that wow. That's all I knew. And I got to say, uh, I was tickled and and in all the right places. I think wow. a lot of people in there were wow. tickled. And, well, and, we'll get to the tickling. And... One of the beautiful things when you when you deprive yourself of uh, <laughs> any information yeah. is you find out that Cedric the motherfucking entertainer <laughs> is playing the big tent church reverend and you don't know because the entertainer is no longer his stage name. No, no, they left that but out of the credits. He still has three names, which is so uncanny. And yeah. uh, and he was he was fantastic. I thought actually he was a great choice in that role. But anyway, I digress. I just think there's a lot of surprises, and I've rarely enter a movie these days knowing so little about it. I think it's. I mean, obviously, it's the ideal way to see a movie. The only time I've ever done that. And I remember it because it was the only time, was in 1996 with the movie Unforgettable with Ray Liotta and Linda Fiorentino. I went into the theater electric because I had never even heard of it, let alone seen a trailer. Mm. And the irony is I cannot remember it. Unforgettable. Mm. Uh, mm. Anyway, but back on to First, first Reformed. Reformed. Well, as we were talking about, Paul Schrader is a dying breed. He's, he's working with a dying breed of pastor. This is a traditionalist sure. pastor. And I think the style, and we're talking about the 133 to 1 format, I think it fits. And just the way it's directed is really the mindset of Ethan Hawke. He's, he's, um, it's the mindset of Paul Schrader through Ethan Hawke. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty much a control freak, uh, you know, the, the man in the room scenario that 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 schrader's been obsessed with throughout his career but closed off and mm-hmm. isolated a lot of the mm-hmm. shots yeah are like these these singles or close-ups and and they're very kind of jarring static. yeah they're static but Long. they but you're aware of them it's like it's it's very uh it's very old school um it's very confrontational like yeah. uh, almost everybody's dialogue is shot head-on 
uncomfortably body so yeah. close to the lens so that distorts a little bit yeah also. yeah it's yeah. O- ozu it's uh, uh the, the the straight on back and forth um yeah yeah i mean you can you can connect it to whatever you want but i'm gonna go ahead and say it's pretty fucking boring it's I'm, tough. I'm just gonna mm. put it out there ethan hawk is is here to play he's looking awesome He's taking whatever youth serum that Josh Brolin is slamming into his veins. But the movie, at least in the early goings, to me, very awkwardly directed, very Mm. awkwardly staged. You have long swaths of time, just static camera counseling this young environmentalist who doesn't want to bring a child into this world that's dying. And to me... It didn't feel like a movie. It, I'm, I'm going to go straight crossfire. <laughs> I'm going I'm to butt heads with the Lodge Master as well. Right. But go ahead, yeah. Zach. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say that um, in my head, early on, I thought this is a film by a director who knows exactly what he wants to do with the camera. Exa- he's making choices with mm. script, presentation, format. But everything is very clearly decided, very confident. Agreed. And, and, agreed. And yeah, I, confidently I lazy. No, no, I no, don't, no. I, I gotta, no. I gotta side. I gotta side with the all. Lodge Master on this one. It felt like a student feature. It no, felt, no, it with felt a student like, again. Yes. No, like, classic no. Lucas. I knew it Lucas was gonna not. come it in with it. Bright, heavy handed. Yes, no. bright, heavy handed. No. Poor, felt poor, like a student. Portentous, not pretentious, but portentous, and just very, very sophomoric. And and yeah, without Ethan Hawke delivering, being the glue that holds it together. I don't necessarily agree with all these adjectives that Lucas is throwing out, uh-huh. but I agree with but, his spirit, and I like that he is... it felt like um, an old man who had, like, a student over for coffee, oh, and the student no, was no. like, hey, mm. hey, Schrader, you know the Earth's fucked by 2050, right? It's, and he's like, what? And then, like, this, he, no. he got, it's like, like a, It's like a TED Talk oh. that you made into a play, and then you shot it as a movie. Paul no, Schrader's no, the guy no. who got the Coney 2012 video after yes, the guy went no. crazy, yes. and, is, and is like... If you were listening to this right him. now, it just hit him. You would think this movie is is devoid of humor, which it is. Hold not. on, Boy, you hold would think, on. Not a humor. We'll get to I, I don't think it's intentional. That is wow. a straight, we, are, we, are, we are a car divided. Here. We are a car divided. It is not. And and I I just gotta say, Zach, you were not on the edge of your fucking seat during the first no, no. hour of I, that no, movie. No, no, I thought no. it was expertly directed. I thought I was, fuck uh, you. No, no, wait seriously. Up. No, what? what? You're looking. Let, let, you're let, looking to love this. No, let Bishki. No, let Bishki. I thought it had had some. Great. The theme of the mega TD Jake Bishop TD Jake's church with Cedric sure. the Entertainer going against his kind of traditional Christian church. The themes are fine. The theme, yeah, those themes were interesting. To How me. they're presented cinematically, though. Yeah, I mean, what's not cinematic about about every- setting, plopping a camera down in the middle of the room and watching two people awkwardly sitting looking at each other? No, no, no they're not no. awkward. I thought that the scene with the kid, which. It, in, in twenty minutes. No, it seemed long at the that, time, yeah. but it was so key to the entire Agreed. plot that it needed to be. But yeah, but you the could kid get was, it in ten. You could get it in five. But I feel I you feel, were also you were getting a lot of information on the backstory of Ethan Hawke, his past. Sure, yeah. You were getting ten, all the themes, ten minutes because the whole point is that this that this kid and what he stands for and the dilemma. And how it's related to Jesus starts to get under Ethan Hawke's skin. And I think you have a, a dilemma about martyrdom, about... Um, you have a dilemma, like a political dilemma in the church today where you have, you know, Ethan Hawke's son died in the Iraq war. So he's 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 gone against the grain of the patriotic, conservative, abundant church model that... T.D. Jakes represents, or you know, or whatever you want, uh, the 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 big conservative megachurch. Mega yeah. church. So so he's going against that in, in an old school Paul Schrader Christian way. There uh, there are ways to do it without just sitting in a room I, and I, but speaking that just kicks it, it all off. out. I feel, that just kicks it I feel off. the film is a failure because Oof. it is hmm. it is flat and devoid of tension and there were so many the scenes end was very tense where there should have been that. there should have been suspense there should have been tension there should have been like these dramatic reveals my, and everything yeah. was just tepid my note is that it was directed kind of like napoleon dynamite 
in that everything's really flat, oh, awkward, man. almost on purpose. Like if you if you nudge the dial just slightly, everybody is so dour in it. Everybody is so fucking serious that you nudge it slightly. Like just watching Cedric walk around was almost funny, just because we were so fucking starved. I think it does get there towards the end, um... but it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be that awkward. Put a little fucking style into no. your no. I work. think there, I think I think there was style. I think there's a way to have style cinematically, other than um, with a hyper moving camera or exactly, with yeah. kinetic editing. There's yeah. a way. Isn't that Scorsese? That's, not, that's and not what I'm saying. And Schrader's never been Scorsese. I mean, in, in look, at, of... look at the films of Michael Haneke. Like they're exactly they're, those yeah. have a lot of style. Like but the white ribbon. Slow, but they had shit the... going on that wasn't like you knew. It was so premeditated. Every every. I was thrown for twists and turns throughout this, and I I also say <laughs> there's one thing that oh I God. was really getting to me, which is that. Um, people like to separate religion and politics and, and presume that the church is apolitical and Jesus was incredibly political. When that story that Ethan Hawke starts to tell the kids about the Underground Railroad, I start thinking, you know, it's really fascinating because as he starts to get more political and the money, about it, yeah. the money guy starts to tell uh, Cedric the Entertainer uh, pastor, like, let's keep... Mm -hmm. politics out of our mission here let's just you know preach and uh he gets very upset with what ethan hawk has been up to with these environmental activists it's bittersweet and, it's... and well just just let me finish this one yeah. point and so i was thinking well it in you you can't divorce yourself from politics if you live in the world and if the church is hiding underground railroad um, slaves as they make their way to Canada, that's inherently choosing a morality that is opposite of the politics of the time. And I think that's what Ethan Hawke's character is going through, which is what is what can he he's wrestling with. Which right. The politics of the time is, is one way, and he knows better when it comes to what's going on with the world, and he can't turn a blind eye anymore. The ideas are mm -hmm. fine. They yes. just forgot to make a compelling no, that, movie. That's what I was going to say. Mm. The bittersweet thing is that there's there's a great story here that is Ethan Hawke, as a priest, counsels a young man who takes his own life, but believes in something, and then leaves his last will and testament addressed to the priest. And it could have easily set up a really amazing ticking clock where is he or isn't he going to carry out the dead... Uh, but they stumble even, and bumble it at every completely turn. completely botched. It's completely botched. It's so, so inert, so, to use so, a Lucas Tanner term. Yes! It is yes. so inert for the vast majority of its no, runtime. It, it's, it's you guys are insane. I was anybody the whole time. Anybody Ethan who's Hawk. listening to me... In no, the lodge, if you watch this, thoroughly engaged. Oh my God. I saw an eight-year-old man I, at the end, right in front of us. He said, "This is the most entertained I've been by a movie." But there were also eons, walkouts. He said, "How old?" He was I, an old man. All right. He's an old man. So it's fucking but, traitor, and you but, can tell. There were, you can hear his a, joints there was a groaning. There a lot of inappropriate laughter at certain parts. Okay, let's no, get to I the laughter. there was appropriate laughter. Yeah, yeah. Let's there get, was earned laughter. Laugh. Let's get to the laughter. Okay. okay, there's a dad joke that is told during one of Ethan Hawke's tours, which got such an uproarious art house laugh because everybody was so pinched from how dour and serious everything was. The audience roared with laughter at which, it. Which which joke you were referring to? The 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 choir mistress and and the priest. Right, right. I remember. She, she she chased him around and grabbed him by his organ. Yeah. Whoa, ho, ho, huge art house laughs. That's an official laugh. Number yeah. one. Number two. I believe uh, Cedric Inter the entertainer like turns around in his chair humorously at one point. Mm -hmm. That's an official laugh that they were trying for. Everything else was. In reaction to the movie, no, I it mean the was, last. It was when he's unintentional. Getting, he's, when, when he's unhinged. getting intense with the, he's becoming. Yeah, he's he's wound so tight, he's becoming unhinged. Uh, Straighted and intent for those yes, last. Yes, so absolutely. Not. You don't he think not. when when he goes too far with no the kids way. talking about the Underground Railroad, people were laughing because that was the intentional laugh. I think I no. Know. I think Schrader was like he know. is going so over over the top that he is doing this in front no, of the children. I think Schrader is smirking behind the camera when that's going. On. I, I no, think that's I think intentional. He's supposed to be heavy. And I think Schrader know. made no, a mark in the seventies, and he's still fucking riding that for I you. I disagree. There is wickedness and. There, there is there is a pulpiness 
to the film. A pulpiness? Absolutely. There, this is it's a dry presented. stone. There it's is no pulp. Oh, no, the, it's presented. You don't feel any pulp towards the. Maybe you're. Zo- maybe you were. I was out zoned out. He's bleeding with out, barbed wire. It's lazy and yeah. unearned. And no, I missed no. the part where no, he was going to like carry it. Does, out. It is going, I think. Towards the end is where I had some problems with it because it does go a little too far towards the this is my taxi driver you know late in my career yeah he gives a look to the to the mirror that's straight out of and <laughs> Ethan Hawk is no very very taxi and driver. Ethan Hawk yeah. is no De Niro when it comes to the the kind of me- unraveling I thought okay? Ethan Hawk was fine I thought Ethan Hawk was good when he's you know for the first sure whatever when he comes unraveling i i don't believe it as much i thought he did i thought he did uh uh as good as as ethan hawk could pull off um i didn't i didn't believe in his sudden wokeness like it's like he clicked a couple times on a mouse and suddenly well, so that leads to me to believe he's a conflicted individual i think the whole time there's a lot of shorthand going on and a lot of long hand going on none of it to me, was compelling cinematically I, I think or were... believable as like him turning jihadist. No, over... I, agree. I, I missed agree that. The... I missed that transition. They really that was the that's when you know that's it's so fun. No, the guys yeah, are talking about tension. He's supposed to okay. There is so no he's tension after, in this just, movie. Hold on now, hold on. Now he's entrusted with a suicide vest of the wife of the dead of of the man who commits suicide. Yes, and early. He, she says, "Please dispose of it." We never see him dispose of it. So, so we know it's coming back. Now, exactly. So he's like, "There's a big event. Two hundred fifty years. You're Every w- fucking line of dialogue is about this cheesy two hundred fifty <laughs> anniversary where all these corporate fat cats are sitting in the crowd. It's so amateur hour, guys. You no, you but, see this? No, Bo- I know you see no, this. No, no, Bo- Zach is drunk as no, drunk no, as no, 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 no. Okay, so bolt. What is it? Bulk, bulk, bolt. What's the industry? B- bulk. bulk. See that? That's getting a little cheap. When it B-A-L-Q. gets into the, when it gets into this oil company, and they do a CG logo on the side of a. They building, were really pushing those CG logos. The CG logos were not not approved by me. Okay, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I suspect a lot less is approved. No, 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 no. Much, much you're of being it is... imbo- You're being radicalized by... No, I am not being jihadist. <laughs> I am not being jihadist. <laughs> the boy in the back. Okay, okay. So, but some of the jihad... Like, the the idea that he's going to blow up the church and is a suicide bomber uh, is pretty ridiculous considering what preceded it in the film. Sure. Right? And that's where I think the film has its biggest issue with me is that he did not know how to end this film quite right he didn't you think <laughs> well huge laughs with we, with the ending by okay, the way okay. and well, let's groans not get to the ending just yet we, okay we, yeah let's just dial it. a second with, okay. with, just with know the that's tone. coming when you listen yeah, to all yeah. this with the tone you talking about laughs and you're just poo-pooing schrader away yeah he didn't so, deserve them okay we how brought those the, laughs how about we brought the funeral them. scene with the song that they're singing, you're yeah. telling me he did. That's good satire. That, be... that is good satire. I thought that was the first salad dragon scene. But I did too. No, I did too. I was wasn't. straining for that to be the salad dragon scene, I but so, I, so, then I knew so, it wasn't. So I knew so it wasn't. Was I. I was like, sometimes, but, oftentimes, you think the first salad dragon is the salad. It's dragon. It's a fake out. No, it's a fake out. It's, it's a hidden like a, salad a dragon. dragon. But when we talk about humor, I think Schrader's take on the mega church is funny at every it turn. It is not funny. Yes, it is. You could have a field day with that, and he does precisely zero. He's not going for a total satire. He didn't go for bars. anything. But we but, see one office and some and some choir kids poking at each other. All of it made me smile because I, I was in. I, was sh- I can just see Schrader going into a mega church and being like, "Okay, this is what I'm going to shoot here. This one, you know, he he sees right through the veneer of you know the Joel Osteen." Uh, uh, you know, yeah. So uh, do it. Do it Rick cinematically. Warren. Bring something to it. He, he don't just say it. Don't just sit there. No, like he, he's he got he's got the choir and the ki- and you know the kids like when he's doing but the round. But, but let's when get he's to doing the, the real round table salad with dragon the, scene. Okay, okay. I mean, like I, so so the first right. salad dragon scene, which we thought was a salad dragon, was not. Was, it was, was a bunch of people singing a Neil Young protest song, like a choir singing about fracking and yeah, saving funny. the world. I thought it was funny. Yeah, that was funny. And I thought all was lost because we went deep into the movie, and I'm like, "There's no dragon here." It's kind of like when you go to the zoo. And like the Komodo I it might be too good for a dragon. The Komodo, I, 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 the Komodo I mean, dragon won't yeah. come out, and all the kids are bummed. It's like, oh, no dragon today. I, it didn't know if it was going to dance in the, in the surrealist. Uh, yeah, on the and hot. And then coals. it hits yeah. you so and hard. And then it dances in the face. It break dances on your face. Yeah. 
Um, let me try to explain this. Yeah, go for it. <sighs> Ethan Hawke is drinking Pepto Bismol and whiskey or whatever he's doing. Bourbon. He's drinking himself to an early grave. Uh, Amanda Seyfried, uh, horribly miscast, is the only widow, the only miscast uh, actor in the film. She's they, totally they, agree. I We're going to agree I on think that. She's, okay. she's they fine. The she's the money. not in the weight. She's not able to keep. Well, up there's with nothing, the but there's actors. nothing for her to fucking do uh, either. The I movie hits it, a brick wall every time she comes on. Could have, could have delivered okay, I do too. I do too. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. agreed on that. Okay. Okay. So she comes and visits him. She's, uh, what, five months, six months pregnant, something like that? Yeah. They've been kind of, like, looking at each other the and kind of... name is Mary, by the way. They've Mary. gone on some bike rides. They've gone on some bike rides together, hilariously, unintentionally so. He's got, like, one room in his apartment with, like, a chair in it and no, a light bulb. And no <laughs> furniture, because that it's, it's just like he's, he's hollow, you know? Yeah. He doesn't have visitors. He's not a warm, genial he's guy. He's a man of the cloth. He's a man of the cloth. He lives in a cell. He's so, a man of the cloth. Have you met these people? Okay, okay. Anyway. okay. So she comes in. She's She's still distraught over her husband. And she says to him... You know, when whenever I was feeling dark or whatever, we would play this game called the Magical Mystery Tour. So I, I start listening, you know, I'm like, What what the <laughs> fuck is this gonna be? And she's like, We would lay we would lay on each other fully Flanking. fully clothed and <laughs> sink our breaths together and try to touch each other's hands and we would just body contact. We would try to get the most body contact that we could possibly get. And then Ethan Hawke's like, are you asking me to do that with you? And she's like, no. Well, maybe, yes. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, you are. So they get down on his weird floor. She, her pregnant ass, planks on top of him so they're face to face. And then... It was pretty tense. Actually. It was... Now, if that was it, and they were just breathing on each other, it would be enough for the salad dragon, it was, because it yeah, was yeah, yeah. it was so yeah. unique. It was, like, the only part of the movie where I was like, now we're having a movie here. We're having a movie where I'm feeling something. It's weird. It's interesting. So, <laughs> they start to levitate. And then the backdrop becomes a galaxy of stars. And we start rotating around to kind of an unflattering angle of Miss Seyfried. And this is bad rear projection. I don't even know what to watch. It's you call green it. screen. Unfortunate. But there's no green screen really. And so, yeah. the galaxy of stars <laughs> becomes stock footage of like mountain peaks. So now we're flying. We're like in in IMAX, like Science Center <laughs> territory. We're Christopher Nolan, he is not. They're flying over mountains. Yeah, no, they're exactly. flying over the sea. And then they're flying over like catastrophes yes, like yes. environmental catastrophes yes tires, tires tires burning trash landfills yeah they're just flying and what it is he trying to show you there no i mean <laughs> i'm not going to defend the salad dragon scene i thought it got ridiculous i thought it was a dream sequence but right. they never really necessarily ma- it could have been it could not have been it could have yeah it could, could have been, been real what was going on in, in in ethan hawks's mind with the connection to her yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't need that explained to me. I, I don't want it. I don't need it explained. No. That it was, was the per- best part of the It was a movie. perfect salad dragon, but... Um... Was, yeah, 10 out of 10 salad dragons. There's an yeah. interesting out divide of in the car. Yeah. Matt and Lucas went out and smoked a little salad dragon before the beginning of the film. Immaterial. Bishki and myself kept it pure. It's we were we were pure. It's immaterial. I just I just want to point that out for the record. It's a student feature that <laughs> if, if, it, if it was like art school, okay, you finished it, good job. Exactly. But, but Ethan Hawke, man, I had some unleavened he, bread beforehand. I, believe, I was ready. I can't believe for... he was so committed. I think I think Bishke's past with the church and his well, penchant that, for that being a, a to it. and his penchant for it. being a provocateur. No, no, no. Hey, no. listen. That's what's coming into play. No, and then no. Zach is just sucking at the teat of old Hollywood and wants to no. show reverence. No, and no, no. can't That's admit not true. that this not is a true. boring fossil of a piece no, of shit. No, no, I no, saw, when I saw, when I saw, well, when I saw um, the canyons, I thought this guy doesn't have it. That is a student film. The canyons, that is, that felt the canyons is about even Steven with me for this. So no. you could not be more wrong. No, the, this I, guy was feel he was drinking his taxi driver juice to get him into this script. Yeah, now, script. 
Mm. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. There was. A I lot. laugh. I laugh at this term. I understand. Right, let's go to the bones. Don't... Let's go to the bones. Hold on, hold on. You don't. You may not appreciate the construction of of the plot. You think it, it's not tense enough. Maybe it was lost <laughs> in the expansion. I don't appreciate Fox. the construction of anything. Hold on. Oh, it's more. <laughs> there is hot here. There is more. This is Schwitz. There's more passion. The most heated logic. There's more the passion minute. than okay. usual. This yeah. Prius's <laughs> windows are <Yeah>. opaque. <laughs> oh fucking hate. <laughs> dying. No, you stay. You give penance. Yes. <laughs> I've sweating through my shirt. I'm man. breathing into my armpit. This is perfect. Yeah. That's how it no. Put on know the it's crown good. of thorns. Put on the crown of thorns. <laughs> Woo! I, but uh, you can't say that that this is not as uh, like that this, this isn't a real deal on. script. <laughs> there's Lucas. Great, the, no, there's on. a lot of philosophical. Come dialogue. on! He even brought back. He even brought back the Drano no. at the end. I don't respect this script. I don't respect wow. the filmmaking. The end is a jumbled muddle of nonsense. No, the end. The endings where it. I think it could have definitely. Slippery. I provocative think, you think okay so you think he's gonna bomb the church all signs point to him bombing the church since the second he got the fucking vest yeah early on so they're building up this 250 year celebration it's as cheesy as he thought it was gonna be and <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for the 250 but i didn't know it was gonna happen <laughs> so while his while his estranged on again off again pseudo lover is singing some sort of gospel tune he sees that amanda seyfried showed up pregnant he told her not to go she under she, she seemed to understand um but maybe she's there to save him so he rips the vest off screams into it unintentionally humorously then wraps himself in barbed wire a la Oh, Christ. Jesus Christ. The Christ. And just cuts himself up, looks at himself in the mirror, and then is about to drink some Drano. Which is a bad way to go. Which is a bad way to go, but I was ready for it. And so Seyfried comes in. She's like, Ernst! And he looks at her, and he runs at her, and they start just, like, making out. And Was she getting punctured by that bar boy? I, I, I think she was safe from bloody. it. She was getting bumped by it. But then the screen cuts to black, and then you hear some kind of uh, Father Amort style rumblings on the soundtrack, and then unit production manager, and then We're it's out. over, We're and out. the audience groaned and yeah, laughed. I know. I, I I think that was an appropriate reaction. He, I did a little didn't... bit too uh, to the ending. I Zach, he... are you going to defend this ending? Here's what I am going to say about it. Here's what I am going to say about it. I, I think if you walk right out of the theater like we did, mm -hmm. you didn't. We didn't have time to to even think about what he's trying to say with the ending, whether you think it landed or not. Mm -hmm. He was trying to be provocative and not just ra spell out exactly what he wanted to at the end. He did so that with we, the rest of the movie. I can't <laughs> fully say that he did. I mean, it was I, the ramblings of an old man spouted through like three different characters i think the ending was messy but i don't but i i'm i'm was thinking about it a lot on the way out and i think i'll continue to i'll be uh, thinking about this movie days. all right yes. yeah i'll it give it i'll give it that provocative um in terms of like some the old man in front of us said did she she saved him and i i don't really think that's the reading of it for me but i you're you're putting a lot of stock in this old man <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> i'm saying he got him think he, he got i heard he got that i heard that man grumbling him. a little bit too yeah. there was some walk out well there was another old person in front of us who said are you sleeping yeah that's that's about the right <laughs> that's, that's the, the right, right question that's the west side that's uh, the right question to ask there uh, are buckets of sweat going on. And oh, just, my God. Okay, let's get to the bones. Let's, let's get to the bones. We're in the boneyard. We're outside the chapel. We're in the okay. graveyard. What okay. are the bones looking like? Bishki. Three bones. I think it's one of the better uh, late Paul Schrader films. I, I think it didn't land its ending like like Taxi Driver in any way, but I thought um, Ethan Hawke was excellent throughout. I, I enjoyed the themes. I enjoyed the direction. Mostly um, got a little sloppy towards the end as well, but... Three Bones is what I'm going to give this one. Uh, I recommend people see it. Brother Lucas. This uh, is a one-bone affair for Ethan <laughs> Hawke's performance. It's a poor use of films, scripts, sets, actors, studio vehicle. I mean, I like <laughs> the fundamental premise of a priest counseling a guy who kills himself, and then he has a thing with the widow, and is he or is he going to carry out the suicide vest? That is interesting. 
There's a Michael Bay version of that movie that I want to see, you Ooh. know, with Mark Wahlberg as the priest. Oh, I can't go that far now. Uh, no, hey, I'm just saying, saying I, 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 it was tough. It was tough. But if you want to see a good Paul Schrader movie, uh, Blue Collar, Mishima, Life in Four Chapters, Affliction, there's, 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 they're, they're out there, but not this one. Mr. Sloza. I'm going to go with Bishki. I'm going to mm. ride on the three bone rating. Okay. Uh, I agree. I think it suffers uh, with Seyfried and the ending. And yeah, I, I forgive it of, of its technical failures with the, um, the salad dragon scene. It was still <laughs> provocative and I would recommend it to people with the caveat that if movie, that if slow movies, um, make you feel restless or, or, or are bothersome for you, then maybe <laughs> skip it. But, um, <laughs> if you want to dig in, it's juicy. It's a juicy meat. Fair. My initial response is one and one half bones, and I will just go ahead and say, slow movies do not offend me in the least. Slow movies where I feel like there's an old coot at the wheel who's driving way too slow in the fast lane, those offend me. Because you got the tools, you had the talent at least at one point, put the rubber on the road and let's do something with this movie. I'm going to bump it up to two bones because of the salad dragon scene. I was so thoroughly delighted by it, every square inch of it. I feel like the movie came to life and could have used a little more magical realism in it to goose people into being awake and present and not laughing at it. So, two bones. We are running out of oxygen in this car. <laughs> Sweating through my shirt. A spirited... My feet are burning. A spirited discussion was had. I'm definitely going to be thinking about this. I'm yes, going to pray on it before bed tonight. I'm going to watch Mishima later. <laughs> I'm going to propose. I'm gonna, in, 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 in final, I would propose that the brothers of the Lodge cast oh, please. revisit uh, movies you've seen and, and update your bone ratings later on in season one and sure. see if anything changes for you. I would like everybody in the lodge to see this movie so yeah. they can realize that me and Lucas are 100% correct. I think I would love everyone in the lodge to see this because I think it's going to be talk. We're going to talk. We can talk about it. Go see it. And if the movie's worth talking about this much, it's got to have something. Seeing. It's yeah. worth seeing. It's worth seeing. Uh, love and light to you guys. Light. We, uh, light. <laughs> if we If we survive, <laughs> you'll hear us again on the next episode. If not... We uh, carbon monoxide into oblivion in this Prius, and I'm gonna tell you guys, I would be so happy if that was if that was just it, just <laughs> fucking evaporating with you folks. I love you into guys. The mist. Into love the you mist all. With, with you all. Love and light, and uh, say your prayers. Schrader, a good night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>